out of breath. Hard work getting in. Right, I've just come in. This isn't actually my first time on the glide, but first time in the UK in the conditions I'm very used to. And uh, I would normally be using a carve, uh, which is a lower aspect, which gives me a lot of lift um, at the slower speeds, um, which allows me to use very small wings, like um, the wings that you hold onto. But today I went out on the 900 glide and because it's a super high aspect, it's really weird because the camera's on the wrong side, uh, because it's a super high aspect, uh, you need quite a bit of speed actually to get the foil up, which I'm not used to because I'm used to using the low aspect. So we have a lot of onshore conditions and today we've had a lot of wind over the last few days. It was rolling swell and even out back it was, I don't know, maybe shoulder high rolling swell. The sea state was really quite rough. I actually found it quite difficult to get up onto the foil. So this foil definitely isn't for beginners, even though it, I kind of envisioned it to be um, like super easy to get up and going, but it's actually just super easy to stay on the foil once you're up because it's high aspect and super efficient and glides once you're up and once you're going forward and it's up, then it's actually really smooth and really fast and there's obviously minimal drag. So that's the main difference between that and the low aspect. Um, so yeah, I was on a four meter wing, four meter unit, which is generally quite powerful for a wing. Um, I was on the collab mast and then I was only on a 65 litre board and it, uh, yeah, so four meter and the wind strength, I think just looking at the pier was about 22 knots. So I think on the carve, which is an 1150 low aspect, I would have definitely had enough power, but because on, on 900 high aspect, uh, which is yeah, the super high aspect, it doesn't have much lift. So getting going was actually quite tricky. Uh, I'm definitely going around in circles, but I'm just trying to like articulate how it felt on the water. Um, basically, I'm not gonna sell this foil to beginners and maybe not even to intermediates. I think it's best for people either on flat water, that would make a huge difference because you could just ride your rocker line, ride your straight rocker line, get the speed and then come up and you'll be, you know, whizzing around almost like a free ride sort of foil would feel amazing. But in places like this, where we have rough sea state, you either need to get a bigger foil if you're gonna go for the glide or you need more power. So bigger, a bigger wing in your hands. Um, yeah, compared to maybe a lower aspect uh, or a mid aspect. Um, I'm used to a super low aspect, so yeah, I just explained. But yeah, so that's the gear. But I sound like it wasn't very good and I sound quite negative. It was amazing once I was on the swell. I could hop between like little sections because like I said, it was very messy today. So I could hop between little sections without really having to pump. It just carried the speed through and that meant I could just transition between little sections to other sections and felt like I definitely couldn't have done that on the, gar the carve. The carve needs a braking wave for it to generate, not to generate lift, but generate speed. You need to, it's quite sensitive. Um, not sensitive, it's not the right word. Um, the carve in comparison is, it's just more like aggressive. It, you kind of ride from rail to rail, almost like a surfboard. Uh, and it generates lift at slow speeds, but it doesn't like, it doesn't necessarily mean you can just ju jump between sections. Uh, I don't know, I can't really explain why, but um, yeah, this is amazing for like downwinders, unbroken swell, riding swell. But even when I was on the swell, it was, yeah. I think, I don't know which one I used. Maybe it was, a pro I think it definitely was a prototype when I was in Italy, but the one I used when I was away was definitely a bit more twitchy. I think actually looking at it, the stabilizer is straighter. I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but it's pretty much dead straight on the rear. I don't remember seeing that on the one I tried in Italy. Maybe that's made it better, but yeah, it wasn't as twitchy. Um, it did, it wasn't, it wasn't what I mean by twitchy is when you're carving, it doesn't uh, feel unstable. It feels quite smooth and you can sort of quite calmly S between swell to swell and it feels, it feels good. Um, yeah, definitely like that foil. Definitely like think it's very good for a lot of the conditions we get here. You just need to be a good rider and you need enough power in your wing. So maybe I should have gone on my five. That would have really helped me get up and going. But either a slightly bigger board or the 1000 front wing would have helped, um, would have helped a lot. <laughs> what was the other thing? It, it, um, because it needs to be riding at speed, if you're not like very good at transitioning from one uh, feet stage to another, so going into switch before you then go into a jibe, 
I found I, uh, it's quite sensitive. So I didn't do it as quickly. And because we're, on, we're in quite lumpy conditions, I couldn't get from one side to the other as quickly. I came off the foil and then once you're off the foil, like I said, it's, it's quite a hard foil to get up unless you're going really fast. I definitely wasn't powered up enough. So once I came off the foil in switch, that was it. I had to jump off and, you know, turn myself around. Um, so yeah, it's quite a sensitive foil in terms of you need to be pretty good on your feet uh, in your transitions but I guess a lot of people who are using this maybe ride in switch which is what I normally do on the inside if you're riding in switch it doesn't really matter because you know you can just lean on your heel and turn back on your jibe um, but when you're actually doing your feet position unless you're on flat water so if you ride on a lake or you ride in like a harbour this foil will be amazing you just you'll probably have much more stable conditions and yeah it'll be really good um new unit i've used it a couple of times but just then having the really rigid front handle lovely massive like massive game changer really for that wing just meant when i was on the wave i could just rotate my my wrist um, and that would rotate the wing uh, almost like i'm holding the rigid uh, handle on the boom it, it kind of feels like that which is really really nice and just gives you that sense of control when you're on the wave and then i'm in the rush harness i said i was going to try it um <laughs> I left my harness line on my slick boom, which is with a customer on demo. So I actually had to use um, just a piece of uphaul rope from a, an old windsurfing boom or windsurfing extension, uh, which was very short, but actually worked really well. Um, there's a little moped, which is great. Um, which really actually worked really well. And yeah, it's just, it's just really easy. Like it just kept the wing close to my chest, which meant I could keep the power on. Um, yeah really liked it can't really complain i've always liked harnesses i think they're great um you can see it there it's great can't rate it enough really just try a wing harness so many people think it's just like going back to windsurfing uh trying a harness winging definitely isn't like windsurfing um it just makes it easier uh and makes you yeah makes your your energy levels a lot higher because you're not so tired but yeah that's my first go in the uk uh, in the south coast conditions on the glide uh, to sum it up you just need a bit more power and then it's amazing you